Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next uh, conversation is about COVID-19, and it's not good news in any way. Um, there's news about 13 uh, variants or new cases of uh, the UK variant found here in Nigeria. Um, and of course, um, a lab in Abuja, the federal capital territory, that has been shut down by the PTF for uh, giving out fake COVID-19 results. Um, we've been invited to speak with us this morning, Dr. Saeed Babajide, was a former chairman, Medical Guild of Lagos, uh, and of course, uh, Dr. Alera Roberts, a senior lecturer, College of Medicine, Unilag. Thank you both for your time. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Alero Roberts. Um, and um, one thing that, you know, that I had brought up, you know, earlier was about the 13 new cases of the UK variant. Um, I, I want your, you know, thoughts on that one. Um, is that something that should put fear in, you know, the rest of um, us? Um, and could we have somehow avoided having that variant here in Nigeria? Well, um, uh, fear is a bit of a strong word. I think we need to be incredibly cautious because we have to remember that in a virus, the virus cannot move by itself. This virus is still moved by people. Now, we have to also understand the science of viral mutations. Every time the virus infects a human being and passes through that human being, it will undergo some change. And some of that change is good for the virus in that it makes it more transmissible and what may make it even more, more deadly. But some of the, the change may be bad for the virus and kill the virus off, so we won't worry about that. But what we need to remember is that the virus needs to infect new people in order to mutate and bring out these new variants. Now, what, we, what the scientists are worrying about is would a mutation make the virus more deadly? Would a mutation make the virus make the vaccines that have been developed so far ineffective. Both of these are in the realm of the scientists and they're working very hard to make sure that they keep ahead and abreast of these mutations and whether these mutations are going to be, um, still going to be uh, 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 by the by vaccines that have been developed. But what we need to do as the public in, you know, being concerned is to make sure we do not allow this virus to transmit from person to person. Once the virus can't transmit from person to person, it cannot mutate. And then we don't have the concern of new variants coming into the country. So we've picked up 13 cases of a new variant. What we haven't picked up are the many more cases of many more mutations that might be taking place. And the only way we can avoid that is to stop transmission of the virus. Right. Okay, Dr. Sahid, let's bring you in here to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the, new, the new cases, 13 new cases of the COVID-19 mutations and variants that we've seen in Nigeria. Like, thank you, like Dr. Alero said. The, what do you mean by mutation? Mutation means changes. Like what we are doing in the world to kill the virus. Virus itself is also trying to change its structure in order to prevent all devices working, in order to eradicate them. That's a natural. Natural thing is that as human beings trying, the organism also will try and make sure they also exist. Now, that the variant we are talking about that, that they have been in Nigeria since uh, the first of discovery in November, till now, and like what Dr. Alera have said, that, that there are still more because we are not testing. We are on, till now, we are still under testing. They have been able to know and how do they get it? Trans transport from transport from UK. You realize that some from country I saw people people coming from UK because of this variant. But Nigeria is still open. Therefore, we have more than 13 in Nigeria. And what mm -hmm. government should do is to checkmate. Look at our airport very well. Approve our airport very well and take that test very, especially people coming from UK. Or because we are having at least 13 cases now. I think the, go uh, the government of Nigeria should take an action. Either banning any, yeah, yeah, any, 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 any plane coming from, from, from UK for now. If not, okay. we continue to spread. And you know, our culture of our people, we are not, they don't do testing. When majority of Nigeria doesn't even believe in the COVID. Therefore, the testing we are doing, I'm, 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 I'm sure, we even more than even double or triple the touching, touching we, are, we are talking about. What the government should do is to go because at the um, uh, AstraZeneca, 
they have realized that AstraZeneca is not as effective. So this new new variant of the of the of, of, of the COVID of COVID nineteen virus, therefore, government is, 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 is purchasing the AstraZeneca. What now happened to those that have the, the, the what do you call it the, the variant? Government have to sit down. And the problem is we are not doing research. I could remember that the Institute of, Pharm of, of Pharmaceutical and the Institute of the, of the N uh, uh, NIMR, that the NIMR, that is of the, the, the medical research, pharmaceutical research, I talk about the DG, especially the pharmaceutical, I've been talking about the side, the side, the side. Till now, we are not doing any research. A country that can produce vaccine, we cannot produce vaccine. I think we need to sit down, do research, and try to even come up with something like Africa, apart from the European one or from the American one. Thank you. All right. Um, back to Dr. Alera Roberts. Um, I was actually going to bring up um, the conversation on research here in Nigeria. You are a senior lecturer at College of Medicine um, in Unilag. Um, what would you, how would you rate the level of research we are carrying out here in Nigeria since, I mean, the uh, COVID-19 was discovered here in uh, February 2020? Do you think we're doing enough? How much more do you think we need to also put in with regards to research and understanding the peculiarities of our COVID-19 situation here in Nigeria? Frankly, we are not doing enough, as Dr. Said said. We are, we, uh, it's still a massive amount of uh, research that still needs to be done. There are so many questions that we need to ask. A lot of the research that is going on in the laboratories can still be ramped up. And we're hardly doing any research in the community, as he said, to even find out what, where these variants are coming from. Because we call it the UK variant simply because that's the type of gene mutation that has taken place. But we have, we do know from research in other countries that many of these variants are being picked up without even the history of international travel. If we could ramp up our testing and we could ramp up our community research to find out how many more variants there are, how many cases of we don't even know whether we have the South African variant, which I'm sure is in, in country right now. And that one is even the one that is of more concern when it comes to vaccine effectiveness. So in a nutshell, no, we're not doing enough research. Yes, we have the capacity to do a lot more research if the enabling environment was right. Because researchers are scientists, and scientists need to be incentivized to be able to do the research that they're doing. A lot of our scientists are spending their time looking for diesel, trying to get water, trying to make uh, ends meet, pay school fees. How can they apply their superb knowledge to the area of research? So the country has, a, the government has a lot to do to make the enabling environment right for research to be carried out. Okay, Dr. Sahid, so, you, you mentioned a lot of points uh, earlier that I'd like us to expand on, but let's stay on the mutations and, you know, the new strain, uh, strain of the coronavirus. How would you say this new strain, this new variant, negates all the breakthrough that modern science has come up with? regarding COVID-19 vaccines, because in South Africa now, the, the, the headlines are that there are, you know, one million vaccines in South Africa, but they're not effective for the new strain, the new variant of the virus in the country. So how does this, you know, this development basically changes or uh, basically makes ineffective all our efforts in vaccine production? Yes, like I said, like I said, like, like the way human beings trying to live comfortably the microbes also want to live comfortably. That's why normally, naturally, by the time we are trying to look at the drug that we kill them or anything that we kill them, they also try to change their structure. They try to change, like Dr. Adela said, they try to change their structure in which those drugs or those vaccines will not be fed, will not penetrate them. That's what is happening. And the thing, me, I'm thinking, might not be, the research I've not done on it, I'm thinking of the way the world went into this vaccine. You know, the reason that, like, like Trump, Trump, the former president of America, was saying, we bring out vaccine, bring out vaccine, we're talking about bring out vaccine. I think the way we went about the vaccine in the world, the way, the rapid way we went about vaccine, we didn't look at, it. there cannot be any variant of it. That's what we are finding ourselves in this situation. I think the world, WHO, had to take responsibility, had to sit down and look at it in without it being rushed. I think there are some vaccine now. They are also go to sit down and look at how preventable we can be able to do if there's any variant. Because variant comes from the from the what do you call it from the drug 
you be if you be like anti malaria, like what is it? If you be that something anti malaria, like we are using chloroquine, the 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 what they call the parasite, we also change the structure. That's what is happening. It's natural, but the only thing that that's why we are talking about research. If something happened like this, it now goes to the researcher, the scientist look at what is causing this thing because the virus are also mutated, they have changed their structure. What okay. they have to do now is for the researcher, the scientists all over the world, especially the WHO to take the lead. In which case, they look at the what type of vaccine can be. The vaccine has to be changing continuously until when we get there. That is natural. And okay. for us in Nigeria, that is as I said, we don't even done any any any, any research. Talkless of having any breakthrough. Okay, um, Dr. Alaro, let's bring you in to react to you know to the question and what what uh, Dr. Sahid has said. What are your thoughts basically on how you know we can continue to improve on our research and vaccine production to match up to these mutations for the coronavirus? Well, as you know, I am a public health physician, so my main areas of concern will still be in the community. First and foremost, let's start with what we can do and what we can do very well. We can obey all the non-pharmaceutical interventions of keeping our distance, wearing our masks, and hand washing. And I must commend Dr. Saeed. It is clear he's out and it is clear he's already wearing a mask. He has had to pull down so he can talk clearly. <laughs> but it is clear that he is keeping to the non-pharmaceutical interventions. That is something we can do very, very well. Once we can stop transmission of the virus. Honestly, the rest of it is mere details. I mean, asking for us to start the vaccine production when we haven't started even the more simple things like uh, keeping equipment, scientific equipment in good working order is a bit of a far reach. So let's not go to, let's not try and get to the moon when we haven't even learned to crawl. So I think what we need to do is start in the community and start to change the narrative of keeping our distance, wearing a mask, by washing our hands frequently and stopping the, the transmission of the virus. Already we do know that uh, the vaccine producers, the, the vaccine developers, are keeping a very close eye on these mutations. And as Dr. Saeed has said, are working very hard and they keep tweaking the, the vaccine. So even the AstraZeneca vaccine, I'm just reading the new uh, paper that came out this morning, even the AstraZeneca vaccine is being tweaked to fit the new UK variants, and what the science, what the developers have said is that one dose is not enough, but by the second dose, serum of people who have gotten the second dose are, is already uh, destroying the, the new variants. But we are certainly not there yet. This is Nigeria. We don't even have a single dose of any vaccine, not any vaccine at all. So what we can do, we must do, and we must keep encouraging people, begging them, adoling them, wear a mask. Keep your distance and wash your hands as often as possible. If we can stop the virus transmitting from person to person, we can actually stop these viral mutations. All right. Um, obviously, um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done here in Nigeria, including the um, um, campaigns and the enlightenment uh, that needs to go around. But in the middle of all these discussions on how dangerous you know the pandemic is, um, we are also faced with situations where people are given and purchasing fake COVID-19 results. The PTF um, shut down a lab in the Federal Capital Territory that was issuing fake COVID-19 results. Dr. Roberts, um, how much, you know, does this maybe annoy you? And, um, you know, is, is this, you know, something that, you know, you, you, of course, expected to happen here in Nigeria? How could we maybe it do better? It is sad. It is sad. This is our narrative. The minute you put out something, people spend more time and more energy trying to get around it the wrong way. It's very sad that this is our narrative. I personally have been in the company of some people who were boasting about paying a reduced rate for a fake COVID uh, test. Sadly, the girl's mother eventually ended up getting COVID and dying. I haven't wow. been able to express my condolences. That's the honest truth. How about you? The That's problem is that we, 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 we do this and we end up hurting only ourselves. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry. It's really sad. Dr. Sahid, your response, please. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see, you see the problem that the government policy also affects everything we are doing. Like Dr. Hmm. Lara, Lara have said, we are type of people I cannot even understand. <laughs> Since the time I was right, I cannot understand us. We like to do things in another way. When you are talking about positive, they all look good negative. I blame, the, I blame the government. When when government is supposed to do that responsibility, 
increasing the testing tester, the laboratory, increasing the laboratory, you allow the private sector to come into a pandemic issue. What do you expect? You are saying that in Lagos now, you are saying only IDH that is free. All the other people, are, are you are allowed to pay. If you want to travel, want to do any education, you have to go to private. What do you expect private to do? Even let you let even remove the, 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 the COVID, before COVID. We know how this lab, private lab have been doing. They can just write any, any, any result. This, now we are, and we are talking about pandemic situation and government allowing private. The, I blame the government. I don't blame them. The government has to take their responsibility, ensuring that they, they, they increase the number of labs, they increase the manpower, the human, human resources of labs, they increase the testing of lab. All these things will not go. If government wants to reduce, you want to subsidize for those that are traveling, then no problem. But giving the life of the human being to private to private lab is questionable. That's my own stand. Government should rethink and do the proper thing. Um, how you know much logistics really is needed to have government con completely control the testing uh, um, um, across Nigeria? Is is it you know that expensive? Uh, that you know makes it difficult for government to handle, Dr. Lero. It is expensive, no doubt. But I think, like Dr. Zaid says, it's a matter of getting our priorities right. What are the priorities of government? I mean, to be able to protect. I mean, even if, even if you said that you had to allow private laboratories in, I know in the UK because I'm just coming back from the UK. Anything testing to do with the management of COVID is free. However. If you need a COVID test for the luxury of travel, then you have to go to a private lab and pay. But I can assure you that the sanctions that those private labs are facing, if they should dare to break a single dot or tittle of the protocol, is simply not worth it. So now you've closed down this, lab, uh, this laboratory in Abuja for issuing a fake uh, test. The name is not known to us. In another week or two, they will quietly be up and running because somebody knows somebody in somebody's office, somewhere in the presidency or vice presidency, and nothing is done. No prosecutions, nothing. That is what our problem is. Every sector will shape up and do the right thing as long as sanctions are there and are applied equally across board. So, I mean, it's expensive and it's true. The government has a lot of things it needs to face. So, one, they need to prioritize what they are doing is their commitment is, the, is, the, is their commitment to the response matching the the, the words that they speak, so to say. You and then, if the private sector must come in, there must be sanctions. There must be sanctions. There must be do's and don'ts. There must be sanctions that can be applied. You would also expect that uh, public health officials, laboratories, doctors, nurses, you know, everybody in that space would understand how dangerous it is to give out fake results. Because, of course, it then allows the spread to continue, um, you know, across cities. Um, so it's, it's... But then the big question is that who are the private laboratories employing? Are they employing public health professionals? That's really sad. Um, All right. So j just uh, before we wrap up, I would like to talk about the enforcement of the non-pharmaceutical, you know, guidelines that you mentioned. You were talking about how easy it is for us to wear a face mask, keep our distancing, you know, before even looking as far as vaccine production and research and all of that. So one of the headlines we saw on the dailies today was about the federal government proposing jail term for COVID-19 violators and so many other stories about people being arrested in some parts of Nigeria. Uh, I saw one in Imo State. Lots of people were arrested. Mobile courts were set up and they were sentenced. I think they were going to pay a fine or spend uh, some number of time in you know, prison, so to speak. So do you think really that this is what Nigerians need you know, to make sure that they actually obey COVID-19 guidelines with uh, jail term and fine like this? Dr. Alero and Dr. Said, please. Yes, thank you, thank you. My issue is the if you want to enforce, you start from your own. Everything starts from me. If the politician, like the governor of Kogi State, is being arrested, if the what happened in Kwara State, when the, the, the video, the viral video that people are pushing, if all of them were picked and arrested and prosecuted, if those you see the if those things have been done, and if the law enforcement agent at the road are being arrested and prosecuted, people will follow. Let's start from the politician. Let's start from the law enforcement media. Let's start from the earth worker. By the time we start it, people understand that it's a serious thing. We have to start this from, from, from our own side. In a situation, government is saying that 
non pharmaceutical, but they are doing rally, doing election. And what, what do people people to, 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 to believe? In the situation that you have a you, you have a ICU, except the TVC and some other people are going to the ICU and see people on OCD. But what the government will show people dancing, do that, people don't appreciate that. People always if you, if you look at CNN and any other thing, they are going into the ICU. See how people are dying. They are talking about how many people are dying. How did how is affected the, the family? But what we see in Nigeria, I will like do this political. I've used one thing or the other that I know is not COVID, is that it's malaria is malaria. That is our problem. Right. When the elites, when the law of government agent, when the government are not doing what they're supposed to, what they expect the populace to do, they have to start from us. Doctor, Doctor Laura Roberts, let's have your thoughts on, I, I on that. I totally agree. I totally agree. If we're going to start this thing, then we start from the top. I mean, I've seen some very sad uh, videos of politicians and people in government doing the wrong thing. So, what do you want everybody else to do or say? I, I, I know because I, I'm, I'm always working at the grassroots and I know what people are saying. Oh, this is just a government ploy to make money. Oh, COVID is not real. Oh, after all, look. And that's what's happening. And more attention is being paid on the dancing and the politicking and the uh, rallying and whatnot. And then we don't see any prosecutions. I heard people say, COVID is not real. Let them name one person who has died. So I think it's a very good idea to go into the ICUs, go into the hospitals, Go into the, even talk to some of the people whose loved ones have died and ask them, now that so and so has, you, you know, your loved one has passed on, how is that working for you? The breadwinner has passed on, how is that working for you? So that these real stories can come out and then we can see the effect of bad behavior. Mm. All right, uh, I think you. that's where we will be uh, wrapping up the conversation this morning. Thank you to uh, Dr. Saheed Babajide, former chairman, Medical Guild, uh, Lagos. Um, thanks for your thoughts. And also Dr. Alera Roberts, Senior Lecturer, College of Medicine, Unilag. Thank you also. Final you know, question, Dr. Alera, um, how is our triple gold medalist uh, doing? Oh, he's doing very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can see him across, over <laughs> my shoulder. Thanks for speaking Thank you with very us. Much. Have a great day. Waiting for this pandemic to be open, Amen. to be over, so Amen. he can go back to training. Hopefully Amen. so. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Dr. Saeed. Yes, I believe that uh, all the solutions that we need for COVID-19, those doctors basically state to them, we all have a responsibility to wear a face mask, keep our social distancing, and the government should start this enforcement from the top. Like Dr. Said rightly said, the Kogi state government is very adamant on his stance that there is no COVID-19 in the country. So why should someone like that not be arrested? Why should he not be in jail? Why should he not be fined? Why would they go on the streets and just arrest random people? Well, Those people should serve as the example, example that we all can see and emulate. A lot of laws in the country only you know, affect the poor. Um, they're not for government officials. Uh, they are not for the rich. So if you're rich enough, you can beat some of all those laws and those regulations. Uh, the president also has um, a few times also failed to lead by, lead by example and always put on a face mask. You know, the president's aides, um, his special advisors and, and the likes, you know, a lot of them have also failed. To you might have with, an uh, immunity example, thing that so, they're not sharing with us. So, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's once again, like, you know, Dr. Babajide said, um, lead by example. If you want to enforce and arrest people for breaking laws, lead by example. Let us see that every single person who is putting out those laws is, you know, is, is, is doing the same. Anyway, coming up next, uh, we're going to be talking security now. The National Assembly is going to be having a discussion on the farmers' headers crisis. And we would like to have a quick review on what those discussions should be about. And that comes up next. <laughs>